On this episode of the Nugget Project, we're swapping out our factory radiator for something a bit shinier. Hello Nug fans, well we're taking a break from the MR2 today. I promised you we weren't going to abandon the Nug. We are still definitely doing work on it and I'm going to be racing it and all those things. Um, but yeah, we're sort of swapping between the MR2 and between this guy. So we're in a second shed today. This is where the Nug lives now. Um, yeah, it's not a big workspace, especially when the whole back wall is full of MR2 parts, which kind of covers half the thing. It's just a pile of rust over there. Anyway, let's get straight to the point. We are swapping out the factory radiator with this wicked unit here from Mish's XL Garage. Now, before we do it, people are gonna ask why are we swapping out the factory radiator? Because XLs just don't overheat. Well, as long as the cooling system's all good, you know, your, your water pump's all good and you don't have blocked lines and your radiator's not a thousand years old, these things don't overheat. You can beat the crap out of them and they're fine. So why would you swap out to what this is, which is a thicker, much better quality radiator. Well, with the XL rules, with the Motorsport Australia regulations, we can't change the timing on the car. The timing on these cars is controlled by the ECU. Now, there is a couple of ways to trick it and things like that. However, all those rules have, all the rules now have changed so you can't do any of those little tricks. Like one of the tricks was, was to take the water temperature sensor out and uh, you know, get, sorry, get another water temperature sensor, leave the one in the car, disconnect it, plug it into the one that's not in the water and leave it in the engine bay. Obviously the engine bay is much colder than the very hot water. The ECU would then think the car's cold and it would advance the timing, which then gives you a bit more power. So obviously the uh, rule makers got wind of that and went, no, you can't do that anymore. And there was a few other little tricks that people did to try and advance the timing on these things because it's controlled by the ECU, you need to trick sensors and put resistors in and things like that and try and, yeah, try and skirt the rules. But the rules have now stated you can't do any of that sort of stuff. However, you are allowed to change out the radiator for one, the same size, well, one that's mounted in exactly the same position, which is what this is. But it is a much thicker radiator, therefore runs the water at a colder temperature. And when the water's at a colder temperature, the ECU advances the timing. Not so much advances the timing, but it doesn't retard the timing. When we're out on track and we're hammering these things, the water temp just creeps into the next level where the ECU can start actually retarding the timing and we lose a bit of power. So with the bigger radiator, we keep those water temperatures down um, and then we get a bit more timing out of these things. So I've driven this on a stock radiator for ages and the car has been absolutely perfect, but if I can get a few more horsepower out of having uh, some, some more timing with this thing, then we're going to do it. So that's kind of the reasoning behind it. Maybe that was a secret for a lot of people, but it's common knowledge for a lot of others. So there we go. Right, let's have a look at what comes in the box with this, because this is a full kit to swap over to this radiator. We do need to change a couple of things. So let's have a look. So as far as I'm aware, Mish is the only one that does a proper aftermarket radiator for, for these guys. There are um, aftermarket units, but they're all kind of factory specs. So this is the only one that kind of looks this is amazing. So let's unpack it. I haven't unpacked it yet. Do does come with instructions eggs. We do have to modify one of the brackets. Um, and then lots of foam and stuff. Now this is one of the brackets that we have to change. So I'll show you that in a minute. Put that down there and let's get our rad out. -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at this bad boy. Unreal. I do love shiny new aluminium parts. Check that bad boy out. And we'll unwrap it because it even has Mish's logo in the top, which is very cool. Here we go, we've got that Mish's XL Garage logo on the top there. It's a beautiful piece of gear. So yeah, I, I do love a nice radiator or cooler. That's very cool. Six, so um, basically this is fairly drop-in affair. You do have to modify a couple of things. So we'll, uh, I guess, first job is we need to drop the old radiator out. And the easy thing about this is, I'm pretty sure you can do the whole thing with a 10 mil and a pair of pliers. That's it, so super easy. All right, let's put this aside. We'll drop the coolant and get this old radiator out. Now while we're at it, just a real quick note on uh, coolant. So something that's a bit weird with Motorsport Australia is I'm pretty sure in the rules it allows you to run whatever coolant you want. So a lot of people run glycol style coolant, which is really slippery. Now, 
I think this is actually should be a rule change for Motorsport Australia. I don't know why they allow it. Um, because if somebody blows a radiator or something like that, it basically just puts slippery stuff all over the track. Or if you're leaking, that then goes down under your back wheels. And I think it's a really dumb thing that that isn't banned. Like my old man used to race sidecars in Europe. And back then, this is back in the 70s and 80s, and it was banned back then in Europe. Like you weren't allowed, you're only allowed to run water in your radiator, which I think is, should be the way it is. So I don't actually run Glycol, I run a Redline water wetter, which is a different type of formula. I don't actually know what it is, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the technical terms for it, but it, it works really well as a coolant, but it isn't slippery. It pretty much just feels like water. So yeah, if, if you're doing it, it works really well. I'd go and get a bottle of that. I think it's about 30 bucks. You do about two or three fills and just mix it with water, it's really good. So I am gonna try and save that because it's not that old in this car and I don't really wanna have to go buy another bottle. So we'll pop the radiator, the uh, hose off. This side is it here. And uh, we'll try to save as much of that as possible because it is good stuff. <clears throat> so there is a tap on the stock radiator. Um, oh God, that is very tight. Uh, or you can just pop your bottom hose off, but I'm gonna try and control how much water's coming out this thing in one go. So we'll pop the cap now, I've got that undone. I knew that we go everywhere. There we go, we saved the majority of it. <clears throat> okay, while that's draining, we'll pop off these top brackets. So it's just two 10 mils here. We use our Ryobi Whizzer. I'm not sponsored by Ryobi, but I'd love to. So Ryobi, if you're watching, there's a couple of tools I'd really, really like for my MR2 project. That'd be great, thanks guys. Take our brackets off and the rubbers, and we'll keep them aside because we'll obviously reuse those. We'll grab our pliers and just top, pop off the overflow hose, an expansion hose. Might be a little stuck, get a wiggle. That's it, and he can sit over there for a second. Right, so we'll undo the clamp for the top hose. Pro tip. If you can keep the spring clamps that go on these hoses, do it because they are so much better than those worm drive clamps. The factory ones really rock. Okay, there we go. Pop him off. Now we've just got our thermo fan in here, so we just need to disconnect that. Squeeze in and just pop off that connector there. Now we just need to undo our bottom hose clamp. Same as the top. It's just either a squeezy clamp or a worm drive, so I'll just get that done now. Cool. There is a little bit of dirt in this water, I might have to change it. Bugger, I was hoping to save that stuff. Oh well. Okay, and then we just pull our radiator out, making sure we don't damage anything. And if your radiator's still in good nick, I'd save it, because it's a great spare in case you damage yours at the track. And then you can throw the stock one back in. She's a bit dirty, but she's still good. Look at the difference in width there. Look at that, you can tell like, the core's almost double the width. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so before we get too excited with the uh, new radiator, we have to take the thermo fan off the old one. Now, it's completely up to you whether you want to run a thermo fan. Obviously with the race car, you're moving nearly all the time. It's just on the dummy grid and stuff like that, that you may get some heat in the car. Um, I'm happy to run a thermo fan. It's only a little bit of extra weight and honestly this car like I'm running a ballast anyway, so it's not like I'm chasing any more weight saving. Uh, so I'm happy to put the fan in. If you do have, if your car is pretty much from stock, there will be another fan here on this side. Get you in the camera. On this side, and that is your air conditioning fan. Ditch that guy, you do not need it. When I first built this car, I did um, change that fan out to run with this one as extra cooling. You just don't need it. So just ditch it, it saves weight. Get her gone. Cool, once again, 10 mils. That is the beauty of working on these cars. 
Much like Japanese cars, the whole car can be pulled apart with 10, 12, 14, 17, 19. And a couple of screwdrivers and pliers, that's it. They are so easy to work on. And that's why I think it's fantastic if you want to work on one of these cars yourself, like you build one for the series, because it is just a big Meccano set. It's super easy to work on, and it's a great way to learn mechanics and learn how to work on cars. So we'll put our fan back on, and it just bolts straight into the places provided. It all just works. I do love aftermarket products that actually bolt on, because so many don't. I can tell you that right now. And be careful using ratchets like this because it is just alloy and you can strip threads. But I'm heaps professional. Cool. Now, in the instructions, it does state... I mean, I'm basically translating instructions for you here. It's pretty, pretty basic. Um, so, we've removed the radiator from the... Uh, and removed the fan. Uh, Cut both the lower rubber mounts as per the diagram. So on the diagram, we've got these little mounts and they've got a little extra section that you need to cut off. Now, the reason mine are already cut and the bracket is already modified is I did have a very, very early generation of one of these radiators in the car briefly before Bathurst. Um, but it was, I think it was a prototype one that our friend Adam Macro lent to me. And, um, it didn't really fit with a thermo fan. I wasn't confident running without a thermo fan at Bathurst. It was a whole thing. So I basically put the radiator in there, wasn't happy with it, pulled it out, put my stock one back in. So I have modified a lot of the car for this, but basically all you have to do is just chop the top of the rubbers off and they will end up looking like that. Um, now we do have this bracket here. So let me show you that one. So that is a bracket to replace the driver's side bracket inside the car. Now, as I said, I've already made one for this car, but let me show you. Um, let me just change it out for you. We'll just put this one in. Okay, I'll use a GoPro to show you this bracket. So down here, you can see there is one, two, there's the uh, passenger side bracket, and that is the driver's side one, and this one can be unbolted. Now, as you can see, I do have my own modified one in there, but we'll swap it out and we'll put Misha's one in because it's probably a bit nicer than my crappy job. Let's do that now. Now, the other thing in the instructions uh, that Mish said is that the wiring loom may need to be changed and because the wiring loom does kind of squish, because this radio is much bigger, it's trying to take up more space, you may need to just um, unsnip the wiring loom and just move it a little bit, which I've already done because I had that bigger radiator in there, but it's very easy to do. So there's my little ghetto bracket, which to be fair, wasn't that bad. And we'll get our nice shiny new one, which is much stronger. It's got the um, folds in there, whereas this was literally just an L bracket. So this will be much, much stronger. So we'll pop that in there. And just use the standard bolts that we just pulled out. Aha, I was wrong, sorry. So this is the standard Rubber mount is usually like that. So you cut the top section off and you leave the bottom section in. That was my bad. So top section stays out, bottom section stays in. And that'll fit into that bracket that we just put in. Great tutorial, Matt. Awesome. So the other thing uh, Mish says in the instructions that um, the front little chassis bit there may need to be massaged with a hammer, uh, which I've already done, obviously. But yeah, you'll just see where the radiator's hitting and just give it a bit of a, a love tap in there. Just push it out the way and everything should be dandy. But mine should fit because I've already done that. Alrighty, so we'll pop our caps off. Now, one thing I do like to do with any new radiator is just flush it out with some water. So just get your garden hose or whatever. And just give it a flush, just to make sure there's no manufacturing slough in there or anything like that, swarf I should say. So just get your garden hose, give this a squirt out and just make sure it's all good because you do not want that stuff in your engine because that will be bad for it. So I'm gonna go do that now. Cool, now that wasn't anything against Misha's radiator, it's just a practice you should do. Just always be careful with your cars and your engines. You never know. Okay, let's drop it in. You've got to be careful. Make sure your hoses don't 
whack anything or scratch a new radiator. I've also got an air box that is uh, very close because that's my custom air box which may be a little bit of a problem that's okay cool all right so now um, top brackets what I put them it does state in the instructions that you probably need to cut these down too so once again we will need to cut these rubbers down so they fit you just want to make sure there's nothing digging into the radiator where it's going to wear through it over time so you will wreck your radiator so you can see there my this one's a little bit it's a little bit wonky the whole thing shifted this way a bit but it's in there fine um, yeah, it's just touching in there a tiny bit, but it's all seems solid. So don't forget to plug your uh, thermo fan back in. That's it, and I'll just have to cable tie my cables there for my um, sensors. And the last thing you might need to do is just cut your top hose down a bit, see how it's going to be kinked. So I'm just going to lop a little bit off the end um, just to shorten that up. We may need to do the same with the bottom because this radiator is thicker. Obviously, that is all pushed in a bit now. So we'll do that. So when you're cutting stuff like this, always err on the side of going longer rather than shorter because you can always cut more, but you can't add material. Alright, there we go. We'll put our hose on now. And run our clamp. Now we need to put our expansion hose back on. Now we need to put the bottom hose back on. Once again, we may need to shorten it, but we'll have a look. There's a lot more slack in that hose, so we may not have to shorten it. Let me have a look. No, nah, that's fine. That goes on there easy. So I've just got to get my pliers, put that clamp on, and then we can fill it full of fluids. Cool. Awesome. So we'll fill it full of coolant because, uh, yeah, I'm not reusing this stuff. <laughs> Obviously, there was still a bit of dirt left in that old block. And, uh, yeah, she's pretty gross. So we will be filling that with some fresh stuff. So luckily, I had some of this Redline water wetter left over, which is great. Um, and these little funnels are the greatest thing ever. They're actually funnels that fit properly into radiators. So you just pop the... Cap. It's all like three bucks online and just put it straight in there and then you can go for gold so make sure all our hoses are all done up which they should be cable tie that everything else is good let's uh, pour our water wetter in and the rest is just water preferably filtered distilled water because you don't get the impurities that come out of your tap but uh, I'll see if I have any. So yeah, this is totally the purest distilled uh, spring water from the Alps of Scandinavia. All right, now it's time to bleed the car. There is a million videos online about how to bleed cooling systems, but basically with a car like this, they're so easy. You just start it up, run it up to temperature. If you still got a heater, make sure you got your heater on. Uh, we don't have a heater. So really you just Start the car up, let it get up to temperature, just keep topping it up and you'll see the air bubbles burp out once the uh, thermostat opens. That's it. Now I forget how rowdy this car is, especially in this shed, because we've got the Mish's exhaust on this thing. It's so good. Let's start it up. So good. Alrighty, get it nice and warm and you keep topping it up. She will bleed herself. Any air bubbles you do have left over, as long as you've got air, uh, 
water in your expansion tank, it will bleed itself when it cools down after your first run too, so don't stress too much. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Um, the thermo fan's now kicked in, the thermostat's opened. Pretty confident we've burped out all the air. As I said, any other little bits, the expansion tank will take care of. But we're pretty good. Still a couple of bubbles coming out. Pretty happy with that. So just make sure your expansion tank has got some uh, water in it too. So it can draw back if it needs to. Put our radiator cap on. Just be careful, obviously, hot water's hot. There we go. Okay, I have a bonus tip for you guys today. With your shiny new alloy radiator, I have one of these in the store as well. Obviously, not a Mishas XL one, another one. Um, use this stuff. This is Autosol Metal Polish. This is the best stuff for making that shiny. Um, obviously our radiator is still pretty shiny, but once it's cooled down and make sure it's dry, use some of this on a rag, I'll show you. It comes up schmick. My radiator is still a bit hot, so this isn't the right time to do it really, but just get a little bit on there. And you just polish it in and just keep going, keep going and it acts like a cutting compound, and you can't believe how shiny you'll get your radiator with this stuff. I think mine's a little too hot still. Okay, our radiator's still too hot, so I'm gonna show you on our oil catch can here. So just get in there, and you gotta use a bit of elbow grease, just really get the polish going, and it'll go black. And once you've done a bit of polishing, you look at this. And get your clean rag. And with your clean rag, let's go to town and really buff it up. And it comes up like an absolute mirror. Look at that, how good's that? This stuff is unreal. I used to do uh, competition motorcycle trials and I had an alloy chassis on my competition bike and I used to use this stuff and it would come up mint. There we go. How sick is that? Like an absolute mirror. So there we go, friends. Our new Mishas XL Garage radiator is in there, and hopefully that'll give us a couple more ponies down the straight, which would be amazing. Um, yeah, pretty easy thing to do. Um, they do cost a little bit of money, but they're good quality, and honestly, there's no other option out there. They, these are the best, so it's worth the money, I think, and in the grand scheme of race car things, it's not a lot of money, really. Cool, so that's the end of today's video. It's just a short one. Um, I will be racing this again, but uh, cost of living and home loans and things like that, I just can't afford to do it right now. So, you know, people going, oh, you're spending money on the MR2, but I'm not going racing. Well, those little things with the MR2, you know, it's a couple of hundred bucks here and there for doing metal repairs and all that sort of stuff. To take this out for a weekend racing, I'm up for, you know, $500 entry fee, $200 for a, um, for a garage, and then you've got fuel, accommodation, food, all that sort of stuff. By the end of a race weekend, we're looking at one and a half to two grand. It's a lot of money, whereas a few hundred bucks here and there, um, and I get to have a project that I can work on in my own time, whereas I go and throw two grand at this for the weekend, which is super fun, but that weekend's gone and done, and then I'm sitting at home not having much fun after that. So if I throw two grand at that car, that is literally months worth of parts and stuff for uh, working on that, which I can do in my own time. So it's a bit of a stress reliever for me when I'm not working and not with the kids, I can go in that shed and work on that car. So that's kind of where we're at at the moment. I will be racing this thing. Hopefully money will get a bit better. Job security is a bit unsecure at the moment. So we'll uh, see how that all goes and that pans out in the new year. Hopefully it all works out and we can go racing again because I really miss driving this thing. Even just starting it up and then I'm revving it. I was like, oh, I want to go racing. Uh, and there's some cool events, like there's a night race at Calder Park in a couple of weeks. I can't afford it, but man, that would be cool racing under lights. I've never raced under lights before. Um, there's a few hill climb events and rallies I'd love to have a crack at, something different, you know? And I think you guys would enjoy watching that, but for now, I'm just gonna be a hermit in the shed with the MR2. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Keep supporting me and please keep watching the MR2 videos. They're cool and hopefully we can keep building this car up and that's gonna be Ripper and we will be doing some fun stuff with that too. 
We'll see you next time.